this lesson, we are going on a soccer tour. Not quite with Bafana Bafana or Banyana Banyana, but hmm, wait and see. In the previous lesson, I asked you to try to find a clever way to remember the trig ratios. I hope you came up with something that works for you. But I'm going to give you a problem to solve. And you are going to decide which trig ratio to use. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the trig ratios, decide which trigonometric ratio to use when finding the length of a side, and use the theorem of Pythagoras to find the length of a side. It is time to recall the three trig ratios that we learned. Let's start with sine. Sine alpha is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. And what about cos? Cos alpha is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. And tan? Tan alpha is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. You need to remember these definitions because we will keep using them. Let me tell you the way that I remember the ratios. Because I love soccer, I remember the words soccer tour. <laughs> what does a soccer tour have to do with trigonometry? Give me a chance to explain. I take the first letters of each ratio and its sides. So I have so, ka, tour, pronounced as soccer tour. Look carefully. I hope that this will be helpful to you. Of course, you can make up your own rhyme. One that I have heard is Silly old horse cracks all his teeth on apples. Remember that this is just one way to remember the ratios. Let's practice these ratios with an example. Remember that we always use a right angled triangle. Here is triangle ABC. C. Let's fill in the hypotenuse and the sides opposite and adjacent to the given angle alpha. AC is opposite the right angle, so it is the hypotenuse. Is AB opposite or adjacent to angle alpha? AB is opposite angle alpha. Let's look at BC. It is right next to alpha, so we call it adjacent. Okay, we are now ready to fill this into a table. As I go through this, remember SOCATUA. So we have sine alpha equals opposite divided by hypotenuse and in our triangle we have a b divided by a c then we move on to cos alpha which is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse 
and in our triangle that will be BC divided by AC. And then we have tan alpha. And tan alpha is opposite divided by adjacent, which is equal to AB divided by BC. Are you ready for some more? Let's take a look at triangle ABC again. This time around, we will use a different angle, angle theta. Look carefully at angle theta's position. If we refer to angle theta, which side is opposite it? BC is now opposite angle theta. And AB is now adjacent to angle theta. What do you notice? Can you see that the opposite and adjacent sides have changed places? AB is opposite angle alpha, but AB is adjacent to angle theta. BC is adjacent to angle alpha, but BC is opposite angle theta. And what about the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse, AC, stays the same, as the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle, which is at B. Let us complete this table, but this time round we will use angle theta. Remember for the definitions, so ka -tua. Sine theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse, so it is BC divided by AC. Cos theta is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so it is AB divided by AC. And tan theta is opposite divided by adjacent, which is BC divided by AB. Now, let's see how we apply all of this. Here is a typical example that you might do as part of your assessment. In triangle XYZ, angle Y is 90 degrees, angle Z is 20 degrees, and XZ is 50 centimeters. Let's fill in the hypotenuse and the opposite and adjacent sides. XZ is opposite the 90 degree angle. So XZ is the hypotenuse. We now need another angle, so we refer to the 20 degree angle. Relative to this angle, YZ is adjacent. What about XY? XY is opposite the 20 degree angle. The question asks us to find the length of XY, the opposite side. And we already know the length of the hypotenuse. Which trig ratio do you think we're going to use? Choose the ratio that includes the opposite and the hypotenuse. We can use the sine ratio. Now, let's fill in the values from the diagram. Sine 20 degrees is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse and in this triangle it will be xy divided by xz. So sine 20 degrees is equal to xy divided by 50. Now we want to calculate xy, so we will multiply both sides by 50. We then get 50 times sine of 20 degrees is equal 
to x, y. By now, I am sure you know that we need a calculator to find this answer. Remember to press the buttons in the correct order. Both calculators give the same answer of 17,1. So, length of xy is 17,1 centimeters. Now, how would we find the length of y? Z. Remember, there are two ways of doing this. In the triangle, YZ is adjacent to the 20 degree angle and the hypotenuse is a known value. Which ratio works with adjacent and hypotenuse? Can you see that it is the cos ratio? So, we could follow the same steps we just did and use the ratio cos instead of sine. Can you set up the equation? Cos of 20 degrees is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So, cos of 20 degrees is equal to yz divided by by 50. What is the next step? Well, you use what you know and you solve the equation. And the second method? Here's a hint. Pythagoras. Because we are working in a right angle triangle, we could use the theorem of Pythagoras. For this triangle, the hypotenuse is xz. So xz squared will be equal to yz squared plus xy squared. No matter what method you use, you should get the same answer for the length of the side yz. Just remember that when you round off a number for the answer, you are working with an approximate value. That is why we could get slightly different answers using these two methods. The task will help you see whether or not you have learned what we set out to learn in this lesson. Copy the diagram and fill in the given information. In triangle PQR, angle Q is equal to 90 degrees, angle R is equal to 38 degrees, and QR is equal to 20 meters. Find the lengths of PQ and PR. Practice sa ka toa and you will become really good at trick.